Profit.tv, bringing you the news before it happens. Stream live into your home via the World Wide Internet. Welcome to Profit.tv, bringing you the latest news from the spiritual front. The following program is being streamed live from Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Program already in progress. I thank you that we're establishing your kingdom, Father, by our presence in the territories that you call us to stand in. Father God, uh, even as you said through your servant Paul, having done all to stand, therefore stand. Father, I thank you that it's consistency. Father God, I thank you that you teach us your consistency, Father God. Uh, Father, to be established in your ways, in, in your rules, Father God, just the way that your kingdom works. And I give you praise for your encouragement this day. I give you praise for your presence Father, with us in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that you will speak through me, Father God, and reveal exactly what it is that you want to reveal, and I give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Father, we just shake off the, the dust of the today, of the troubles, of the tribulations of today, Father, and we rejoice because, Father, we are seated in a kingdom with you. We are seated in an in, eternal kingdom with you. We are seated in an eternal kingdom. Father, this is just but a, a passing, a quick passing life. Father God, that goes by so quickly, Father God, uh, more quickly than we realize. Father, use us to establish your kingdom. Use us to trust, touch people, Father God, and pull people, Father God, out of the mire and out of the muck, Father God, and pull them into your glorious presence. We give you praise, Father. We thank you for your love. We rejoice in you. We thank you for the good season ahead for each one of us, Father. We thank you for the good season that you have for each one of us, and I give you praise for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Use me this night, Father God, to touch and to heal, Father, your people and to uh, heal wounds, uh, Father, in every area. Father God, I pray that you will permeate, uh, Father God, every area through your children. And I give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We give you praise. I give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hi. Do you guys know what praying in tongues is? Have you ever heard it before? No, that was the first time. Kind of interesting? Yeah, what's exactly going on when you do that? So that's um, like a way of speech or something? Yeah, have you ever read the Bible? Yeah, I've read, I've read certain, certain areas of it, but I have not really gotten into depth with it. Okay. Uh, in the book of Corinthians and other places, it talks about uh, giftings that God gives us when we receive the gift. Remember Jesus, when he rose from the dead, said, I will not leave you orphans. I will not leave you alone, but I'll send you the teacher, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He says, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Um, power to be my witnesses. Paul goes through the different giftings of the Holy Spirit. Uh, workings of miracles, um, prophecy, interpretation of prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, word of knowledge, um, giftings of administration. There's a lot of different giftings of the Holy Spirit, which is really interesting. And when I got, um, years ago, when I got uh, saved, uh, and then I got water baptized, and then I had the uh, people that water baptized me laid hands and prayed for me that I'd receive the Holy Spirit, and I got the gift of tongues. And it's interesting because I went into... Uh, my shower later that day taking a shower and as I'm taking a shower I just started thinking man this tongue stuff sounds really ooga booga you know should have bought a Honda you know what am I doing here this sounds really nutty so um, as I'm taking a shower I, I said God you know look I'll be a good Christian you know now I lay me down to sleep Cub Scout honor you know come on stop with all this nutty stuff God didn't say anything to me I take two steps out of the shower and as I walk forth God opens my eyes in the spirit now keep in mind I'm, I'm really, I've been really stubborn, you know what I'm saying, my, you know, doing things my own way my whole life, and I've been really stubborn. And uh, uh, so I get out of the shower, and I wanted truth, right? I wanted truth, so God knew that. So he opened my eyes and showed me in the spirit realm, and I saw in front of me, a few feet in front of me, about this tall, a little uh, black, dark-looking uh, Indian, kind of a fat little Indian demon spirit with long hair and God said this is what's living he said okay fine this is what's living in your house in fact it's been living here for a long time and he said uh, it's what's trying to get you not to pray in tongues right now 
He said, now, you can take a baseball bat to it if you want, but it's going nowhere. It's a spirit. He said, and I've given you spiritual weapons for spiritual problems. Well, I looked at that demon and I went, go in Jesus' name, and the thing left. Okay, God was teaching me that I was thinking with my carnal mind, you know. But when you're dealing with spiritual matters, you follow? Baseball bat, your fist ain't going to drive a demon away from you. Um, Smith Wigglesworth felt that um, sin, or when you do certain things that open doors, the devil gets access to you. The Bible says those that keep themselves, the devil doesn't touch. So sometimes when we do actions that open our soul up, the demonic can come into us. Does that make sense? God, uh, that's why Jesus shed his blood for us, was to get us delivered or to get us saved from all the works of the enemy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyway, so there's just different giftings uh, of the Holy Spirit. Do you guys go to church anywhere? Angelus Temple. Angelus Temple. Okay, you guys are part of the team. Oh, praise God. Okay, with John and them. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Welcome. How are you? Good, good. So, um, yeah, the gift, gifts of the Holy Spirit um, could not do... A lot of people pray. When I was a little boy, uh, I went to Lutheran school, right? And, you know, a little boy, my mom sends me to summer school. I go to summer school, they tell us to go be like Jesus. So I go home and start trying to walk on my swimming pool water, right? Be like Jesus. And I figured I didn't have enough faith, so I'm trying to step up on the water, right? Um, went back to Sunday school, and I said, okay... Um, how do I be like Jesus? I, I tried walking on the water. I, how do you do it? Show me the water trick. And they kind of laughed and said, no, 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 we don't do that stuff. What they meant was be nice, be good. You know, do your dishes, you know, go to bed on time, do your homework. Um, and I kind of watched them and they prayed for people and nobody get healed. And then they gossip behind each other's backs. And I walked out as a little boy and looked up in the sky and I said, God, I believe you did that stuff in the Bible, but I don't think these people at church really know you. And I said, I want to know you. I want to know you. All right. Do you know that nobody in the Bible did miracles without the Holy Spirit? Isn't that interesting? Do you know Jesus didn't do any miracles till he received the Holy Spirit? Nobody did any miracles. The Spirit of God is the power of God for resurrection. Does that make sense? The healing, it's, it's all that's the Holy Spirit. That's the whole anointing, the authority. The gifts that the prophets waited for was to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? The prophets lo would have loved to see our day. And, and the Holy Spirit, it's amazing, is so available to us. But the devil has run such a um, such roughshod over the church to keep people from getting filled with the Holy Spirit or released into the gifts of the Spirit. Now, doesn't that make you kind of wonder, why would the devil fight the Holy Spirit? Do you know the devil fights baptism in the Holy Spirit more than he does salvation? Did you know that? Why? He, why? He doesn't care if you get saved and go to heaven and get out of his hair, because he's still running the show down here. He cares if you get the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's the teacher, the comforter. That, the Holy Spirit is the authority in us. Does that make sense? When we're Paul said... Uh, building your, yourself up, your spirit up by praying in the Holy Ghost. Okay. Do you realize that there's basically a, a couple things that really build your spirit man up? Um, praying in the Holy Ghost and reading the Word of God. Build your spirit man up. Do you realize that when you're dealing with a demon or you're dealing with sickness, a spirit of infirmity, a lot of times people's own spirit is very small they might have big muscles but their spirit man is real small and that infirmity is bigger than they are but do you realize that the bigger your spirit man gets when a spirit of infirmity or another spirit comes around bam it's not it's you don't get sick Isn't that interesting so there's an authority in our spirit man now most of us don't recognize who our spirit man is okay we now do you guys recognize who your flesh is I mean, do you guys recognize when your flesh is tempting you? Right? Yeah, no? Yeah. Do you recognize the difference between your soul and your flesh? Okay. Um, your soul would be your emotions, your thoughts. Your will gets mixed in here a little bit. 
Does that make sense? But your flesh is just that thing that just does stuff and then you feel your soul feels condemned because of what your flesh just did. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, most of us are very unaware of what our spirit man is. And our spirit man isn't very big. It's not very strong. Our flesh man, our beast. The Bible calls the flesh man the son of perdition, the flesh, the beast, the creature. It's all the same thing. When Daniel saw a vision and Daniel the prophet saw that the kingdom of God was given to the beast for a season, but then he also saw that God did something and started raising up sons of God or raising up his kingdom, right? Well, Daniel was before Jesus and the Holy Spirit was given. Remember the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out? You guys remember that? All right. Daniel was before that. He was a prophet. He was seeing visions of the future. In Daniel's time, it wasn't like it is today. It was different. The Holy Spirit hadn't been given. There was no um, remission of sin. The, Jesus hadn't shed his blood. You know, there was the Jewish traditions where they did the, the sacrifices to get rid of the sin or the demons from their life. All right. Um, but Daniel saw that the kingdom of God had been given to the beast. Okay, some people say, oh, the beast is going to take over. No, that what, the beast is the carnal nature. Paul said, that which I do, I don't want to do. That what I don't want to do. Ah, it's obvious there's still sin in this flesh. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Does that make sense? And then he started pressing to the high call of God. He started his spirit man. And he said, leaving those things that I've done, those things behind me pressing to the new man the new nature the new call of God so we're not supposed to spend a bunch of time fighting with the flesh does that make you hear what I'm saying not fighting with the flesh then being condemned going in this pattern this cycle oh man I did bad again you've got to sow into a new creature you've got to see who you are today you've got to see who you are tomorrow Half the time, people don't even see who they are today. They keep seeing who they are yesterday and all their shame and all their guilt. Does that make sense? And yet, other people will see you better than you see yourself. The key is to ask God how he sees you and align your thoughts up with what God thinks about you. The song that I just was singing, um, God said, I've, I've called you. I've anointed you, I've appointed you, I've exalted you, I've lifted you up. Why? Because you lift him up. Does that make sense? Okay. The more we lift God up, the more he lifts us up. And he's trying to get us to be more than a creature. The Bible says that the creature was given to vanity. It's talking about our flesh again. Um... It talks that the carnal mind is at enmity with God. It cannot understand the things of God. Again, more revelation comes as we're filled in the spirit of God. Because isn't God a spirit? Isn't God a spirit? Doesn't the Bible say, Jesus said, Those that come to God must worship God in spirit and truth. For God is a sp spirit and truth. For God is a spirit. God is the father of all spirits. Uh, the more that we pray in the Holy Ghost, the more we start to understand what he's saying and what he's imparting to us. Okay? Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on in. So we're talking about the Holy Spirit right now. We're talking about the giftings of the Spirit. Now, do you realize when people asked when the end of the world, when the end of the world would be, do you realize that Jesus said, no man, it's given for no man to know, not even the angels know, only the Father knows. However, you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So can I do a little skit for you that I like to do? Okay. To demonstrate this? Okay. Um, remember when Jesus said... Um, he saw us like sheep, not having a shepherd. Okay? Keep in mind that God is very high in the revelation above who we are. Right? From where God's vantage point is, we look like sheep. You might even say dumb sheep. Okay? Compared to how intelligent 
The guy, look at the, I mean, look at the matrix, the foundation of the planets. Look at the complexity of what he created. He obviously is higher than me. All right, he's trying to get me to hang out with him. Isn't that hard to fathom, okay? Now, when our carnal beast man came to Jesus, who is seeing angels, seeing demons, walking on water, moving in the power of God, and they're just seeing their depraved life, their limited life, that we're paying taxes, how am I going to eat today? A lot different reality. Uh, he saw them like sheep. Even though sometimes in our intellect, in our business deals, you know, our IRAs, where you know, our business, we think we're so smart, right? Manipulating and all this stuff. Yet to God, it looked like a bunch of sheep. Bah, bah. Well, how's that bank deal going? What's that? Bah, bah. Compared to where he lived. He's manifesting what he needs, okay? But he had compassion on us. Well, here comes the sheep or the carnal creature saying, when's the end of the world? And God said, it's not given for any man to know. Not even the angels know, only the Father knows. However, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Well, wait a second. The beast, carnal creature, sheep, bah, I didn't ask about the Holy Spirit. I asked when the end of the world was. Does that make sense? He's, he's, he basically was saying, um, look, there's always going to be wars and rumors of wars. Don't worry about that. Get the Holy Spirit. And the beast couldn't understand that God was actually answering him. He was actually answering him. Daniel saw the kingdom of God. Where is the kingdom of God? On another planet? No, it's here. Well, who's running the planet right now? The carnal man, the beast, the flesh, the intellect, the pride of man, right? But Daniel saw one by one, as people got filled with the Holy Spirit, God's kingdom started being set up, and each beast, that old nature and old life started dying and a new life came forward. And now the beast that once was walking God's kingdom, his planet, was no longer calling the shots, for it's not I that live, but him that lives in me. That makes sense. Isn't that interesting? That's what Daniel was seeing. He was seeing the whole planet being run by the beast, the creature, the carnal man, not having the spirit. Isn't that cool? As we allow God to build up first a kingdom in us, what do we spend time doing? Entering people into the kingdom, don't we? Getting the spirit filled in them, don't we? My life was miserable until his love, his spirit started filling me. Anybody ever been in a fight? Anybody ever been beat up? Okay. Let me share something with you. Do you know that it's demonic spirits that people listen to that get them in a mindset that do those things. Do you realize when you're walking with God, he gives you authority over those spirits? I have walked down dark alleys and went, whoops, how did I get here? Accidentally turned this corner. Next thing, I can't really go. Three guys are coming, right? Holy Spirit. I go, okay, Holy Spirit, you're the teacher. What's up? And he gives me discernment. That's a spirit of murder. That's a spirit of, you follow? Okay, he gives me authority. And under my breath, as they're walking, I bind the spirit of murder. I bind the spirit of, you follow? So you take authority of the spirit. Those guys walk like this around me, afraid. Why? Because you have authority by the power of God over the spirits that are trying to use them. In the, in the Bible, in the prophets, and a lot of people don't read a lot of the prophets, but it basically says the spirit realm rides us the way we ride horses. Interesting, huh? Um, I walked into, uh, after a meeting, I was with Clayton years ago, after one of Patty's meetings, and we walked into um, a Denny's, we're eating, the anointing's still heavy on us, a lot of deliverance, a lot of things going on. As we're eating, I look up, and I'm talking to Clayton, and behind him are some little 13, 14 year old guys and girls. They're being really rude. The guys are grabbing the girls' you know, breasts and hands where they shouldn't be, and all over the place, really being rude. And I was very aware of a spirit of lust that was in the room. And it just made me a little mad. So I thought I would rule and reign with Christ. A lot of people quote that, but they don't do it. What are you ruling and reigning over? Each other? No, the spirit realm. Isn't the devil the god of this world? He's been calling the shots. We're called to call the shots. We get influenced by these thoughts, and we don't even understand when we're being influenced. So we get used by him, and then guess who gets to go to jail? And guess who gets to take the condemnation? Us. And yet, it were, it's, this stuff is inspiring us. Anyway, I look up at the room, and I, I just said, hold on, Clayton, a second. I said, I bind that spirit of lust in Jesus' name real quietly, but I had authority. Remember when um, the 
itinerant Jewish uh, exorcist tried to cast the demons out of that man. Uh, and the man said, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? The ten sons of Sceva and that demon-possessed man came up and kicked all their butts out the door. Um, you, want, you want to be filled with the Spirit of God. You want to walk at that level of relationship with God. And you want the enemy to know your name. Because when you show up, God in you is in charge, not the present circumstance. And I bound that spirit quietly under my breath. That demon knows me. We've b battled before. Okay, you get authority over it. It knows you. It, every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus Christ. All of a sudden, the little kids aren't touching each other, but they're acting like 13 and 14 year old kids. You know, like, ooh, girl germs, don't touch me. And they're having ice cream. The whole atmosphere changed. See, what we don't understand is we enter into atmospheres where rock and roll music is evoking demons, and then people run with the thoughts. Columbine did not glorify God. It glorified the power of the devil. What would have glorified God is if, see, some of those girls' diaries, they said, see, God takes what the enemy intended for evil and turns it to good. That's what we saw there. We saw God take a bad situation and turn it to good. But demonstrating how powerless Christians are against two little demonized boys to where the demons could take the boys over, kill the Christians, and then kill themselves, glorified the spirit of death, which is the devil. It didn't glorify God. If you looked at what some of the girls were talking about in their diaries, I feel like I'm not going to live very long. I feel like what was happening? The Holy Spirit was trying to warn them something was going on. Because we weren't taught to listen to the Spirit of God at that level, to discern what was up, because we weren't taught how to intercede to pray, does that, okay? I don't believe that God simply martyrs people for the sake of martyring Him. I have walked with God many years. God always warns me when things are going on. Yet I watch other, when I was younger, I didn't understand the warnings. Nobody had taught me. And I would run off half cocked and it would, I'd get hurt. People aren't taught when you're marked by the devil. I know when the devil has marked me in the spirit because I learned that. I know when to take refuge and not go to school and to rest under the covering because something's up. All before 9-11, God told me all summer long, walking along this cliff, God said, something really bad's getting ready to happen. I kept saying, God, everything's fine. Something really bad's getting ready. God, everything's fine. And then he said, take the prophets out and come against the principalities and break the assignment. So we did it. Obedience to God. I know some other intercessions that went to LAX. Several places around the nation were targeted. Um, nothing happened here. The assignment over this territory broke in the spirit. Um, we went out September 2nd. September 11th is when all that stuff happened. Uh, when I was in New York, God showed me the ruling spirit was underneath, uh, underneath the city, which I thought was interesting. Um, so often we count on laws of man to bind spirits. We don't have authority to actually change it. We're not taught to do that. Usually what we get teaching in the church is we get a lot of soulish teaching. Now, people have not identified what is coming from your flesh. Usually people can tell the difference between flesh and soul, okay? But they can't tell the difference between soul and spirit, okay? They can tell the difference between flesh. Don't we have, Paul said, the works of the flesh are evident. Adultery, fornication, lust, lascivious, vari variance, witchcraft, drunkenness, revelries, reviling. Those are the works of the flesh. Um, he talks about the works of the spirit. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, patience, wisdom, kindness, gentleness. Okay. Um, a lot of times we don't recognize the difference when it's in the soul and so there's a lot of soulish things that are said that emotionally stir us up but that doesn't raise our spirit man up into authority columbine was very emotional wasn't it very emotional our hearts we felt a lot of emotion but it didn't teach us a greater level of authority in fact a lot of people got more afraid of the power of the devil do you realize that a lot of people if you say the devil or witchcraft they are afraid it's because they really don't have the depth of God that they need. They don't know their authority. They don't know who they are in God. They don't really know who God is and how much he's with them, on them, around them, protecting them. So what happened is a lot of the church just thought, we just don't have authority. 
doesn't line up with the scriptures. I've given you all authority over all the works of the enemy that nothing by any means shall manifest. What God is looking for in these days are warriors, are leaders that can lead by example in the spirit realm that can demonstrate the authority of God just like Jesus did, just like the apostles did. Do you realize they could not take Jesus? They, the army could not take Jesus. Remember when Jesus came out? And they said, which one is Jesus? And he said, I am. And bam, they fell over. Do you remember that? Jesus had to lay his life down. He had to drop his authority. The devil couldn't touch him. He had to be obedient to death. What do you mean obedient to death? Not pick up his authority and stop the enemy from taking him. Because he knew he, was, he had authority, but he knew he was there to be a sacrifice. He had to, being obedient, he had to walk it through. He had to show up for the execution. And he had to not move in the authority that God had given him. Isn't that interesting? I am he. Bam! They all fall over. And then he had to back off and let him take him. Because of revelations of who we are in God, because Jesus is our example, because of revelations of who we are in God, when I got in that car wreck that I shared... And it hit my back. I said, no, devil, you're not taking my back. You couldn't take Jesus' life. He had to give it to you. Well, guess what? You can't take my back. I don't give it to you. Yet, well, you've been in a wreck, and it's normal. I said, no, because you set the wreck up. And I said, you crossed the line to steal from me illegally. I'm not playing in the natural realm. I don't give you my back. You set the wreck up. You're a thief. And I said, so let me tell you what you're going to do. You're going to pay off my car that you totaled. You're going to buy me a brand new car cash. And, and you're not taking my back. And I don't need to take insurance money. That was the devil's way to try and get me to agree that I was messed up. Oh, well, your back's messed up. Oh, well, then give me the money. And a lot of people out of laziness and lack of faith will go that way. And so the back's messed up, but they get some money. But then their money runs away and the back's still messed up. I said, no, I, I, don't, I cannot and all honestness take insurance money for a messed up back when I'm not my back's not messed up did my back hurt yeah was it messed up in the natural yeah but because I walked in revelations of where Jesus walked I wouldn't let myself go there that doesn't make any sense in the soulish man it doesn't make any sense in the flesh it's the spirit the key is the revelations of the kingdom of God the Praying in the Holy Spirit, building your spirit man up strong is how you're able to rule and reign with Christ. Is that interesting to anyone? You guys have any questions? God's calling an army together. The Bible says a mighty army like the world has never seen. He's not talking physical punch baseball bat machine gun he's talking Brahma Shikri a Holy Spirit to deal with the spirit realm because the spirit realm is what influences entire regions in fact the, re the influence over regions are called principalities and they influence complete people groups by putting thoughts in their mind what we're taught to do as Christian is to pull down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God what are the thoughts that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God how about God's forsaken you. Is that a truth or a lie? Huh? It's a lie. God says he'll never leave you or forsake you. He sticks closer than a brother. Well, that's the knowledge of God, yet what I'm hearing in my head is God's left me, he hates me, he's not with me. Our job is to walk in the truth even while these thoughts are being injected into us from the UFO, call them UFOs. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, a, it's a spiritual influence that tries to control because if, if it can get... We're supposed to have a relation with God, right? God's a spirit, right? How do I have a relationship with the spirit? How about his thoughts, my thoughts? His thoughts, my thoughts. Aren't we having an intimate relationship? Right? Well, what happens when I entertain thoughts of the enemy? I'm kind of in spiritual adultery, aren't I? Because now I'm a loser. I'm no good. God's not with me. Nothing good's going to happen. Does that make sense? I'm actually committing adultery against my, if, if we're the bride of Christ, right? 
I, 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 what you want to do, his thoughts, you tear down every other thought. I don't care what you feel today. Do you think I felt good today? Do you think that I conquered half the things I conquered by looking for feel goods? Half the body of Christ, all they want is feel goods. We never get past the baby stage of feel good to the place where we know who we are in Christ, where Paul said, I am convinced. Listen, Paul got killed several times, got risen from the dead, got stoned, got beaten, got thrown in jail, uh, shipwrecked, bitten by a serpent, bam, boom, bam. You think he was, oh, praise God. <laughs> Man, boom, 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 boom. He finally figured out the present tribulation is nothing compared to the glory. And I'm convinced nothing can separate me from the love of my Father. I don't care what comes against me. I don't care. Now, when you start walking in that revelation, you've got some warrior built up in you because you can come through <laughs> like a guided missile full of the truth of God into the most dark witchcraft territory, boom, and explode the revelation and the light of Jesus Christ to the captives who believe they're worthless, who believe they have to be prostitutes because they can't see a way out. If you don't think you're going to run into darkness trying to liberate captives, forget it. But don't you understand that the more you walk, the stronger you get. And the stronger you get, the more territory you can take for your father. And the more people that you can liberate, because he's here to save souls, to save their heart, their intellect, their, their, their emotion, who they are. God wants their souls saved. Some people think that Jesus is in a hurry to prove that some people's version of the Bible is correct that he can't wait to blow the world up, that he can't wait to call this thing quits and teach you a lesson and condemn you to hell through judgment. See, you should have got it right. Some people, I don't know what is going on. God is not in a hurry to see people judged, to see them go to hell. God is in a hurry to see their lives work. He's in a hurry to hang out with his kids. Isn't that, is that good? He's in a hurry to see uh, every time we get a victory, God gets glorified. This is not Don Paul standing here. This is the work of God from submitting to him. The strength is the work of God. The steadfastness when I don't want to show up is the work of God. I was a runner, man. Every time there was a problem... Later, dude, I'm out of here. I don't need to say, but I'm too cool for you. Well, you know what? Nothing ever gets established for runners. Nothing, nothing gets established for runners. It's when you decide to show up. It's when you become steadfast. And so often I listen to people say, I need more of the Holy Ghost. I need more worship. I need more this. I need more of that. I need more of this. And I said, you know what I've learned? I need to be consistent. I just need to keep walking and don't stop. I don't know what I'm going through. I don't understand it. But God, I dedicate this life to you. I dedicate where I'm going to you. I know that I can't miss it because you are in me. Do you want to know how many people think you can miss God? How many people think you can miss God? I got news for you. You can't miss him. He will get you where he wants you in spite of you. If we're stubborn, we go around the mountain and we learn the lesson a bunch of times until we're just sick and tired of that jackass kicking us in the head, which we find out is our own flesh, our stubbornness. I was going to call him a donkey, but same thing. Because sometimes I'm, I'm, my flesh is sometimes my flesh is awful stinky. Does that make sense? The Bible even says it's an ass. Huh? The Bible even tells about the donkey. Right, right. <laughs> okay. So we're here tonight to tell you guys who you are in the spirit. And God says you're wonderful. God says you're wonderful. He says, I don't look at the stuff in the past. I don't want you looking at the stuff in the past. Do you remember if Lot's, if Lot's wife, remember she looked at her past? And she desired her past more than the future. And it killed her. 
some of you guys keep looking at the sin. You look at the old ways. You, you, you think about it. Go ahead. I mean, it's strange that you can you talk loud so we can all hear? No, I'm sorry. It's strange that you just said that because I just had a friend a few weeks and a month ago pass away to a heroin overdose. You know, and it's like, I always was like kind of looking at it as like, you know, God, why do you do this? Because like God has changed my, my way of thinking now because I'm on a new beginning discipleship program. Sure. I've got 33 days clean so and I praise God for that. And now you got me looking at it and you took that bad situation that happened to me in my life that was really hurtful and traumatic and it's changing it for a positive. You know, it's, it's, that's my reason for staying clean and sober. That my best friend died from my heroin overdose. That's right. Yeah. See, our, our, everything is predicated on our choices. Uh, uh, it says that God's not mocked. What you sow, you reap. Everything's predicated on our choices. It's not God doing it. In fact, when I sow bad and I reap good, that's God. That's the blood of Jesus because of his love. What, what's it say? It says, if a righteous man, if, if an if a evil man suddenly turns and does good, he'll be saved. But if a righteous man turns and does bad, he'll die in his sin. Repentance means, for God's sake, head the right direction. When you, how many people have ever blown it? Maybe once, twice, maybe 5,000 times like me? All right. The whole key is to immediately start going in the right direction. As soon as you catch it, as soon as you catch yourself, start going in the right direction. Get headed, repent, change directions. Repent means you're going the wrong way. Yo, the food's over here. The family's over here. The fulfillment's over here. Now, do you realize that a lot of people have dealt with rejection. Any of that in here? Now, here's what happens. When a spirit of rejection enters in, or an attitude of rejection, you can call it a spirit or an attitude, unworthiness enters in. Anybody feel unworthy? Okay. When unworthiness comes in, self-abuse, self-affliction, self-destruction enters in. All of those are based on a wrong self-image. God has not rejected you, okay? Not one moment, but you didn't know that. Because all your life, you were separated from God in your understanding. But God wants to break the inner wall of separation, and God wants you to understand that I'm more in you today than you even understand. And there's a place where we find a completeness and a wholeness in that knowledge. Jesus said, as I am one in the Father and you are one in me and we are one. When does that happen? Tomorrow? No. It should be happening moment by moment. Okay? What is the devil's tool to divide you from who you are in God? Does that make sense? From who you are in God. What did the devil do to Jesus? challenged Jesus' revelation of who he was. He said, yeah, if you're Jesus, if you're the Son of God, jump through this hoop. Turn the rocks to bread. Those are the, the thoughts that hit to get the, us separated from God in our belief system. Are you guys staying with me on this? Now, some of you guys don't realize who you are in God or who God is in you. That's a process of revelation that we come to. But the more that you're praying in the Holy Ghost, the more that you're in the fellowship and continue to go, God will continue to reveal that. If we don't get revelation and authority over the rejection, then the enemy will continue to run the pattern. So what happens... Uh, has anybody, let me, we're talking to the guys for a minute. Has it, have any of the guys ever been rejected by a mom or a woman? Yeah, I have. Every single guy. Has the girls ever been rejected by a guy? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So, now, watch what happens when you're rejected by a woman. You go into a cycle, don't you? Go out and get drunk. 
you, you go out and get drunk. You'll go out and shoot up heroin. You'll go out and do pornography. You'll go out and grab some girl and just sleep with her and tell her to get lost. You'll, you'll, you'll become abusive because it's all based on not feeling loved. Sorry, can you louder? Sometimes you don't want to love yourself, you just want to reject yourself, you know, like, it's like, when it's very, you feel like so much, the world has put so much here, but at the same time, God won't put more here on your toe, but at the same time, it's just seems so stressful, but you want to remember yourself, because every time you try to remember who you are, you got to okay. Isn't it interesting? More. Must be ever noticed there's guys. Girl in the world, and there are men. Haven't you thought about that? Why do you think the men are the attack? Why do you think they're the ones assaulted? We are we are the covering. We are, the, we are the authority. God put us there as a covering and the authority. But the problem is we haven't been understanding the battle. And so we have been lied to and we have believed the lie and we have run with the lie and we perpetuated the lie. God calls us. We're his police force here. We're his authority here. Um... The devil doesn't want us understanding. Do you realize who gets hit more with pornography, men or women? Men. The assault, it's against men again. Does that, are we just saying, are men just basically a, a weaker species? Is that the problem? Or is there a... Well, as most people say, we're just dogs. I mean, we're just a struggling target for the devil. Or are we just, is there a reason why the devil wants to take the men out? I, I'm not, no, men and women in the spirit, there's, there, when, when men and women are in the spirit, there's no longer male nor female. But you need to realize when a man loses the image of who he is in God, he can become very abuseful. He can, that warrior can turn on the woman, beat her, it can, it can abuse, it can hurt. Does that make sense? Women are natural intercessors and communicators. Do you realize how women are better talkers? They're better with relationships? You realize most guys don't have a lot of intimate relationships. Girls have tons. But God made it that way. Usually the, the wife or the, is the guy's main relationship. But the woman will have all kinds with the kids, with the neighbors, with, right? Women are relational. They're also intercessors. Notice how they like to talk a lot more. You know, they, I'm saying guys, I'm talking a lot now. But 
you know, the, 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 the typical thing is, oh, yes, yeah, the woman, right? Yeah, 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 don't you? Yeah, okay. Well, what that is is when a woman loses the Im image of who she is, she can become a gossip. When she knows who she is in God, she becomes an incredible intercessor. So you don't really tell them to, to stop talking because God put that in them. You have to show them who... Well, so often men don't have that revelation, so they abuse the woman or they beat her down. And then you steal, you effectively are used by the devil to steal the image of who she is in God. Now, is it God's idea that we go through hard things? Is it God's idea that we go through hard things? Come on in. Have a seat. There's chairs up here. We're having fun. The answer is, you know what? It's part of life. It's part of becoming a warrior. So we were talking about rejection, right? Jolene, would you get me a water? That'd be okay somewhere. Um, Got some questions. That's good. Um, then how does it work with a relationship with women? If um, the guy has to give authority, okay, the, the women like to talk about. Them. There's a there's a process. So it's not something you're going to get in like one sitting with me. I can give you some ideas. Don't go running off, you know, half armed. Let God work the understanding and the revelation into you. He'll use different people to do that. That's important. Good to see you guys here. Um, um, can, I, can I go with where I... Let me just share some ideas and some stories. First of all, guys, aren't, we're not ready for relationships until we get some things together. Does that make sense? Thank you so much, Jolene. Okay. How about rejection? How about every time we're rejected, we go into a pattern of abuse, right? Yeah. And we go into a pattern of drugs, alcohol, pornography, fornication, whatever the pattern of abuse is, right? Do you think, have you guys know any parents, have you ever seen a kid, dad says, clean the house or clean your room? And, the, and he says, I hate you. I hate you. And the dad goes, oh, you do? Really? Oh, you don't have to clean it. No. A healthy dad says, yeah, that's fine. Now clean your room or I'll blister your butt. You want to eat or not? And the dad's not phased because he knows the kid really loves him. How many times you guys said, God, I hate you? You think that phase is Papa. He's consistent. What is God working in us? Consistency. If we keep going into our pattern, we don't have dominion. So guess what? How many people are tired of going through grade school and being held back and going through the fourth grade yet another time around the mountain? Yeah. My God, when are we going on with this? Well, God's trying to show you, I want you to get dominion here. If you don't, it will self-destruct down the line. And when God builds the house, it can stand in the storm. So you have to have an image of what healthy is. You have to have an image of where we're going. Does that make sense? So God's funny because he uses natural things. Can I show you something about dating? Do you guys ever sit out in the park and watch pigeons? Have you ever seen pigeons mate? Not the actual act, but I mean the courtship part of it. Okay, I'm going to do this and kind of cross back and forth between us today and men and women and pigeons. Now check this out. Basically what happens is the female bird hits the shopping malls. And she's down window shopping, totally ignoring the guy. The guy comes over and gets in front of her and he puffs himself up. Remember when we did this to get the muscles big? Remember how we used to do that in the swimming pool when we were kids? And we get the muscles big? So the guy comes down and he puffs himself up in front of the, bay, the, the girl and goes, Hey, check me out, baby. Aren't I the best thing you Aren't I better than, you know, sliced bread? You know, aren't I the best thing you've ever seen, honey? Check me out. And she's like, You are such an egotistical maniac. Guys are jerks, aren't they? Yes, they're such jerks. That, right? And the guy's over here, right? Pumping himself up. She goes, Get out of here. She takes off to the other shopping mall. And the guy follows her. Bang. And she's down shopping, looking around, and he comes up, come on, baby, come on, don't you want some of this? Check me out. Watch the male pigeons strut their stuff. Look at that rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection that they take. Well, most men won't even go up and ask a girl to dance today. They're afraid they're going to get rejected. 
And you know what? Some girls get a kick out of ripping men's egos to shreds. Well, that's not healthy on their side either. But you know what, guys? The buck stops with us. See, you can dissect all the problems in relationship, but ultimately the buck stops with what am I going to do in my communication. You know, God told me one time in a relationship, somebody, some woman just, and I was like, my turn, <laughs> you know, and I was ready to go and God went, stop. And I went, what? He said, let me show you what relationship, what, what rights you have in that relationship. And I said, okay. He said, you have the right to be consistent in love and that's it. You do not have the right to abuse them back. Because now you're sowing. Now the enemy that's using her is now baited you into the battle. And you're not setting the standard. You're not setting the, the tone. You're not setting the pace. If guys can't get punched up and... How come we didn't mind getting punched around by our buddies and falling out of trees when we were kids and now suddenly we change? Can't we take a little bit of, of punching without freaking out? Maybe emotionally? See, somehow it was okay to be roughnecks as kids, but it isn't now. God needs us to be sturdy. God showed me if a man cannot take the rejection that happens during the courtship time, he's not going to be good when the storm hits. Suddenly the kid says, I hate you. The boss fires him and the guy goes into his rejection cycle and hits the drugs. Does that make sense? No, God wants to give you the stuff, but we're battling stuff in our, our soulish and our structure. And this stuff has to be overcome. Yeah. It's like, um, you know, we when our ego and our rebellion stage, you know, it's like when we go around that mountain and we get tired of going the wrong way. It's like when our ego is like shattered, our, our self pride is shattered. That's when we turn right. to try to find the escape from this place called Earth. You know, that's when we turn to our escape habits, our escape mode to the drugs, the alcohol, to just from hopeless, you know, that we don't think there's no hope no more, but we, I'm learning as I go from the new beginning discipleship, and, and it's like I'm learning my spiritual growth. I, I come from a very dysfunctional family back in Missouri, where I went around the, the mountain for 31 years the wrong way, you know. <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Going around the mountain and the wrong way. That's funny. That's the, that's the devil whammy. I'm learning to grow in my spirit. Grow all the time when I'm going around the wrong way. God was all the passion okay. his hands. So, so the issue is consistency. The issue is not to, when you do mess up, to explode your mess up. It's to get it behind you, get back on track, and get consistent, get consistent, get consistent, get consistent. Um, eventually, God will make your weaknesses your strength. But if you keep giving into the weakness, see, you've got to make decisions. So we don't go by what we feel sometimes. We go by what we know is the thing to do. But God wants men that don't have to react and especially in the rejection cycle. Real bad. I got news for you. You're going to get rejected the rest of your life. Get used to it. Get used to it. Has nothing to do with the call of God on your life. Has nothing to do with who you are. And God is not rejecting you. So let me ask you a question. Why are you so concerned about what men think? God is the one that rewards you openly. God knows what you're going through. He knows your heart. God never gives you more than you can deal with. But God is going to stretch you. He's going to put you in situations and allow it to happen to grow you. Now, I got another angle for you to look at on this. God said, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of your life. When you let bitterness, rejection, anger take root in your heart and stay in your heart, it will continually manifest over and over. You will create that relationship. No matter what girl I tried to date, always ended in rejection. Why? I had a deep root of rejection. I knew the rejection was there. I wasn't sure how to get it out. I needed it out. And as God strengthened me enough in revelation, he could then get it out. You know how he got it out? Just the same way that pigeon had me walk right into the face of rejection, and I couldn't go left or right. I had to take the hits, and I had to just 
I know what to do. I know, and I had to not get offended by it. And these are those who in persecution or tribulation fall away for the word's sake. What word was I walking on? The fact that I knew that I had to guard my heart, that something got in my heart, that I had to get the heart out. And now the tribulation is hitting me, which is walking me through being strengthened in that. Why did Paul say, I count it all joy to go through these tribulations? Don't you want to say, Paul, were you whacked or what? Right? You know, no. Paul understood that that's what was transforming him. Have you guys ever heard of growing pains? Yes. How about every time when you give in to the pattern or you give in and fall, you feel like a loser, don't you? Yes. You feel like, oh, well, if you just give up hope, what's the point? I can't do it. I can't make it through. What's the point? You've just let the devil's thoughts become your thoughts because that's not the ticket. The ticket is that consistency. Does that make sense? Was this good? Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else that anybody has on their heart that you want to ask a question about? Uh, what's consistency? To keep doing it? Keep going? Be consistent in your walk and your, and heading forward. The mm -hmm. uh, Bible says a righteous man stumbles but gets up how many times? Um, and, uh, many times. Hey, it just many times always, 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 always. God used to tell me, Don, don't be so hard on yourself. I mean, I'd make a mistake. Oh, I'm so stupid. How could I? No, God, you know. You guys laughing. You've all been there, huh? Okay. God said, whoa, 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 lighten up. He said, what did you think? You were born with the knowledge of the universe? You think you were born knowing everything? He said, how do you think you learn? By making mistakes. So relax. You're going to make mistakes. And sometimes, parents, you're, you're too hard on your kids. You've got to let them make a couple mistakes. You did. Right? That's right. Uh, the trick is not to keep making the same mistake. When you do see a cycle or a pattern, a lot of times there's an issue emotionally that's unfulfilled that needs to be healed. Like I said, rejection will knock you into a pattern. Okay, I'm like the discipleship, this discipleship program, and I'm learning in this discipleship that sometimes the brother's attitude is not so spiritual you know sometimes we have those days you know sure not the most, the most wonderful but when his attitude reflects your attitude what would you recommend how to deal with that type of situation and you know he's not saying the wrong thing to you because you have a negative attitude how to not react to his behavior you know, you might be having a good day, and then he comes across you in the wrong way, and, and you know, you that's a, <laughs> that's a, that's, yeah, that's a real multifaceted question. Um, a lot of, you know, it depends, every, uh, that's very multifaceted, because sometimes we can't live by ourselves because we need the support groups, because we need to get structure built. Other times, God puts some of the hardest relationships in our life on purpose. <laughs> you like that one, huh? On purpose to knock some of the rough edges off of us and to teach us how to cope. And sometimes the very things that drive us nuts are the very things that are in us that we see in them. So Bible says iron sharpens iron. So you basically do the right thing. Let me go over here real quick. Yeah. You know, I like to collaborate with what he was just saying. Uh, not to get into the flesh. Pray about it or pray with that person. Or just not to get into that flesh and just walk away. And just put it all in God's hand. But what if you can't walk away? You got to defend yourself. A lot of people that I deal with is always up in my face telling me, I, uh, I want your help with uh, Miss Johnson or Sister Johnson, but you got to shut up because you talk too much. And see, I talk with authority like Jesus do, and I get things done. And I had one teacher tell me one time, we can't help you. Can't nobody in the world help you but God. So guess what? When I made up my mind after five years, four months well no five years no two two years and five months i got up and did it myself i felt yeah. a whole lot better and now they still don't look up to me but god's gonna work it out what, what was your question um, what was your question well, my question it wasn't really a question but um i've been through a hard relationship i've been a kid with this 
girl and I was going through a hard relationship and as you were talking about that thing with the he gives you the hard relationship on purpose well now it's like I've gone to two mental hospitals and gotten the drugs and was back on that path but now since I've been with God he's taught me to to go along with my my life now and, and uh, cope with it so good good that's, good that's what you're saying but good I'm learning, you know, I'm one of those that they go around that mountain I'm from Missouri. I think I got that blue bayon attitude. I learned that humble pie don't taste too good. I'm learning to be evil, able to eat it and swallow it. Swallow that ego one, swallow that pride, swallow, swallow that street hustler attitude or that thug, you know, the old me. I gave it to God. I can't be that old person no more. I gotta be a new person in Christ. That's good. It's, yeah. it's, it's hard to be humble. People, people don't tend to give you the jobs, don't tend to offer things when you just jam it in their face. Does that make sense? Right. Um, uh, it's good. Th that, th those are all, yeah, those are all, ab absolutely, those are all people skills and absolutely things, you know. And I, I'm very thankful that for this new beginning because they're giving us enough slack. You know, for for us, you know, enough rope to do really good. At the same time, they're giving us enough slack for us to slip and fall. But they're taking it, you know, slower. That's not expecting us to like change right overnight. They, our director Rick, he's like patience. You know, he is like smooth. You know, he's he's willing to work with you to the fullest extent. Just. That's new beginnings. That's wonderful. Yeah. There's new beginnings and thank the Lord for second chance. So, um, love covers a multitude of sin, doesn't it? Yes. Not interesting. So yeah, sometimes you just gotta love people through the thing, and I'll, I'll tell you the best thing to do, because thank God people do it with me, is when when you're being the biggest idiot in the world. Has anybody else been an idiot besides me? Everybody. <laughs> Oh, you got dual hands up. All right. So, so part of the thing is, remember, God says, remember how I see them. And God says, I want to show you how I look at them. And I want you to sow into them who I say they are, not their present situation. Is that good? Oh, yes. Yes. I'm going back to that pigeon story of yours. Go back to what? Pigeon story. Yeah. Okay. Now, you, are, you said that there is more women than men. Uh-huh. Okay. On the planet. On the planet. More are there more believers than men, women? I and tend to think so. Yeah. yeah. I tend to think so. So why all the churches and all the places and everything is run by men and mostly men that are in these churches? You ask me why men are mostly running the churches? There are more men in the church, more than anything. There are less people, there are less men, but they are by men. All the churches, they are all men, 95% women, maybe few. Do you, do you read the Bible? Yeah, I do. Do you believe the Bible? Oh. Um, do you remember when the Bible says, I don't allow a woman to be over a man? Mm -hmm. because um, Because she was deceived? And you remember when it says that a woman should have power on her head for that reason? Um, I went to God a long time ago, and I had just corrected a sister in the Lord. Uh, actually, she had come to me, and she said, Don, I need you to pray through my house. And I said, why? And she said, well, I've got a spirit at night that comes into my bedroom, and it comes and puts its hand on my thigh, you know. And I said, well, sweetie, that's a sexual spirit. Oh, you think everything's sex. You're perverted. you got sex in the mind. And I said... It didn't come to my room and put its hand on my thigh, okay? And I started to cor correct her with a couple things, and she didn't like it. And she got mad at me. She got angry at me. And what is it? You know, <laughs> hell hath no fury, you know? And it hurt my feelings, put me into rejection mode, all right? I got off the phone, and I said, God, you know, I don't care who's in charge. You know, just rewrite the Bible. I don't care. I really don't want to be the one that has to take the brunt. Let the women run. The, I don't care. Just rewrite it. Just rewrite it, you know. And God took me out, 
I said, I just want to get along. My whole issue in relationships is I always just wanted to get along with the woman. I didn't want to fight. Whatever, yes, dear, yes, dear, and whatever you want, dear, yes, dear. Do you know that women hate wimpy men? Do you know the Bible says that when you correct your friend, he'll have more respect for you later? Do you know that children, when you put rules up for children, they feel loved? It's their boundaries, but boundary brings security. Do you know that kids, everybody, flesh is always testing the limits? Yes. So I said, God, just rewrite the Bible. You know, fine. I don't, and, and God took me aside. He brought me a little dog. And he said, you tell him what I tell you to tell him, and I'll take care of your emotional needs here. Mm -hmm. So my love need was through the little dog. Do you know I found out 10 years later that that sister, uh, who was an actress, had been... Watching Prophet TV. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you cutting edge spiritual technology. If you want to have your spiritual weapons sharpened, be sure to tune in to the next episode of Prophet TV. If you'd like more information, call 818 994 4007. 818 994 4007 been listening to profit.tv you can join us live right now on the world wide web at profit.tv again www.profit.tv is where we sharpen your spiritual weapons using the latest in spiritual technology this is Seamus from Dublin and you've been listening to profit.tv please join us next time as we continue to bring you the latest in cutting edge spiritual technology